Hi everyone, welcome back. We will continue to talk on the second subtopic of bacterial transformation lecture, a concept of competency. As I mentioned before, not all bacteria can undergo natural transformation. Some species of the gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, such as Pseudomonas and Bacillus, can undergo transformation naturally, while others cannot. For transformation to happen, bacteria must be in a state of competence, or what we call transformable. Don't get confused with transformers here. Yeah? Surprisingly, a very famous gram-negative bacteria, E. coli, is not transformable in its natural setting. Competency is a term defined as a state of being able to take up exogenous DNA from the environment. This state might occur as a time-limited response to environmental conditions such as starvation and high cell density. When cell in a competent state, the cell is called a competent cell and they can uptake free DNA molecule from their surrounding. Because this competent state is determined by genetic characteristic, only few bacteria strains are competent in nature. The genetic features include specific protein or competent specific protein that play roles in the DNA uptake and DNA processing. Let's take a look what are those competent specific proteins are. Competent specific protein can be divided into three general classes. One is membrane associated DNA binding protein. This protein machinery work in binding free naked DNA to recipient cell wall. Next, cell wall autolysin protein. This protein helps to lyse the cell wall and make opening. The third one is variety of nucleases. Nucleases are protein enzymes responsible to cut or degrade DNA depending on the purposes. Okay, I have explained to you that there are competent specific proteins involved in bacterial transformation. You have to remember at the early phase of transformation, DNA must bind to the competent cell first before it can be uptake into the cytoplasm. A competent cell can bind DNA molecule 1,000 times more than a non-competent cell. We will continue on the next subtopic, learning about the mechanism of DNA transfer. Generally, DNA transfer mechanism started with DNA binding at the early phase, followed by transportation of DNA into the cell cytoplasm. Transformation process is considered complete once the newly acquired DNA has integrated into the bacterial chromosome. We will later see in detail the difference between the mechanism that occur in gram-negative compared to gram-positive. Do you still remember what you learned in your fundamental of microbiology class? How are both gram-positive and negative bacteria differ from each other? You can pause this video for a while, then list the difference between both bacterial types. Have you got it? The reason why DNA transfer mechanism is different due to the fact that both bacterial types have very distinct cell wall structure. Gram-positive cell wall contain a thick layer of peptidoglycan that encircle the cell, whereas gram-negative cell wall contain a thin layer of peptidoglycan between the cytoplasmic membrane and the outer membrane.